why are females not reborn as the highest religious figures? First of all, the real answer is there must be a lot of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas manifestation as a female, as a prostitute, as a bartender, as a... I don't know. But actually it goes beyond. Manifestation, tulpa, sanjegi tulpa, manifestation of the Buddha can be a bridge, it can be a garden, it can be a cup of coffee, it can be a breeze. When you are so sad, a breeze comes and you feel happy. But we don't think about those things. We are talking about a human tulku, as your question rightly put it, small baby who can't even wipe his own nose, sitting on the throne, giving blessings, getting spoiled, all of that. Why is this happening? Think about it. Culture again, tradition. Let me, let's discuss this. Big, big part of the tulku, tulku system today Okay, first of all, I should tell you this. First, Tulku and a reincarnation, I mean, reincarnation is a, one of the concepts in Buddhism. I mean, you are reincarnation of your past life. You know that, right? You are Yang Si, you know, you are actually Yang Si. But the fact between you and me, I'm on, I am recognize Yang Si by group of people. That's the only difference between you and me. You must be a Yang Si of, I don't know, Napoleon, <laughs> Alexander the Great, <laughs> Alexander the Great, I don't know. Maybe a bird, maybe a, a pig who last year, uh, 20 years ago, who was eaten during the Losar. <laughs> Anything. Yangtze. Okay? But I think you need to know this. In Tibet, because this Tulku business, that Yangtze business became such a big thing in Tibet. Well, historically it started, the Tulku tradition started from the Karmapa. You must know that, right? But now, in Tibet, as you know, Buddhism became a very, very, very influential, you know, it's a very, very influential, I mean, it's after the Tizong, after the Tirabachin, after, you know, wow, Buddhism is probably, I mean, uh, Buddhism basically took over, you could almost say that. In fact, in fact, I met a lot of young Tibetans, who are not necessarily Buddhists, they actually blame Buddhism for destroying the Tibetan original culture. I have a sympathy with them. I have a sympathy with them. Um, even the name giving, okay, for us in Bhutan. Um, Tashi, any Tashi here? Tashi, you see? That's a Buddhist name. And do you know what that is? That's actually Indian name. It's not a, it's not a Bhutanese name. It's not a Tibetan name. Tashi is a, you know, Mangala, Mangalam. And how about, I don't know, Pinso? How many? How many Pinso? Is there any Pinso? Today, whatever the name I'm saying, there isn't. Pinso? Then you, you are Pinso? Well, it's actually Indian name. It's Lakshmi, right? It is it, something to do with the Lakshmi, Lakshmi, Pinso, Lakshmi, Lak, yeah. How about um, Wang Chuk? Oh my goodness. Wang Chuk? Wow. What a classic Indian name. <laughs> it is. It is. Wang Chuk? Yeah. Shiva? You know, Mahadeva? Wang Chuk? These are all. Indian name. What is our Bhutanese real name? Degong, right? <laughs> Isn't it? Right? Dengo. Then what else is there? Nado. Isn't it? Nado. What else? What? Kado. Nado. Kado. Whatever. All of that. 
And even in Tibet, like Yeshe Sogyal, Khandro Yeshe Sogyal, Khandro Yeshe Sogyal, Yeshe Sogyal is a Buddhist name coming from an Indian, Yeshe, of course, Jana, so, you know, ocean, gel, you know, like, a, I don't know, rain. Her real Tibetan name is Karchen Za. Karchen Za. And that's so beautiful. Karchen Za. Karchen means big house. Za is girl, right? So the girl from the big house. So there's a lot of that. Um, anyway, what I'm trying to say is Buddhism became a very, very strong influence in Tibet. So when Buddhism became strong influence in a society, in every level, politically, from social aspect, politic, culture, architecture, right, education. So some of the Tukus become powerful, of course. They become very powerful, they become influential. Plus, many of the uh, Tibetan lamas have a big patrons coming from Mongolia, coming from China, big patrons. You guys were talking earlier about why are lamas going to some places for, with the money? Not these days, not much. In the past, big time, big time, really. Like Mongol, you know, they're very rich. So then what happens? So when the Turkus become influential in the society, politically and everything, obviously there will be a corruption. I want to be powerful. I want to be powerful. My wife is beginning to become pregnant. Oh, oh, it's a Turku of so and so. This happens a lot, has throughout. By the way, you know, please bear in mind, not all the Turkus are corrupted or, you know, like nasty or, you know, there are a lot of, you know, incredibly, you know, like compassionate, kind, and illuminating Turkus and Rinpoches and Yangtzees. But what I'm saying is that this trend has become so big. So then also, so nowadays it still continues. Of course, we don't have that much of a power politically or socially, but we still do, the Turkus do. So here, you, here, this is what you need to think. Actually, Turkus parents, especially the young Turkus parents, they are really, I dare say, they're almost like a criminal. They are really ruining a kid's life. It's really, really sad. Actually, it is, you know, some, you know, you guys should really think about this. Parents put this kid on a throne or whatever, exhibit as a high, high incarnate lama, whatever. Every attention is given to this. Best food, best clothes, so many attendants, all of that. Slowly, slowly, this human being is beginning to become alienated from the rest of the society. Most of these Turkus don't know how to relate to anyone. Because everything is delivered on the plate. Come age 17, 18, 19, 20, Turku's puberty is coming up. Turku is becoming horny. Turku is becoming, <laughs> Turku is becoming, you know, biologically changing. And by then, good part of the childhood has been totally damaged and ruined. And then these Turku's photographs are everywhere. So now poor guy can't even hide like all the other kids can do. Wherever this kid goes, photographers are there, attentions are there. When the Turku is young and cute and sitting on the throne, everybody's like, oh, how sweet he looks. Oh, he's so beautiful. 
The same Turku in about 20 years' time. Look at that Turku roaming around in Babesa. <laughs> Look at that Turku. Can you see how unfair we are doing this? Who is doing this? Not the Turku. Turku from a very young time, they are not demanding any of that. It is the parents, it's the society, it's the culture again. So, yes, something to think about. If you, if you, we, need to, we really need to think about this. I have personally told many of people whom I feel that I can talk to when they say, oh, they have a Turku. Because so and so Lama has given a paper saying that he is a Turku. My first response to this, to this parents are, can you just hide that document for the next 20 years, put it in a safety deposit? Don't show. Give the Tulku good education. Make him explore. Make him do whatever. Make him roll in the dust. Make him even become a waiter if you, if you think it's necessary in some you know, dingy restaurant. Make him date with the girls. I've even said this. These Tulkus, they needed to be... You know, I once I remember even telling people that I want to actually train some girls to make these tulkus to fall in love with these girls, and then the moment they fall in love, they reject the tulkus <laughs> because the tulkus need to tulkus need to go through that rejection because it's a lesson. You know, you feel oh, you know. It makes the because they are supposedly a human. They are supposedly going to be a leader, teach, coach. How are you going to coach when you can't handle your own, you, you know, small things like rejection? So yes, this is a big concern.